It has been one hot minute since I did a recent reads wrap up. Hey everyone, it's Jenny, and welcome back to my channel. This story ain't over. So today I'm coming to you with a recent reads kind of wrap up video. This is kind of my wrap up for October slash like the end of September. I haven't done one of these in like a hot minute just because I haven't been reading as much this year and so every time I finish a book it's only like one book in like a few weeks and I don't feel like doing a dedicated review for that book or it just takes a lot of time for me to actually finish a bunch of books so I can do it in one video but this month I did kind of read a little bit more than usual which was great so I wanted to tell you my thoughts on the five books that I read recently. One of them is one of my new favorite books for the year. Two of them were kind of duds, and then the other two were just really enjoyable reads. They're not new favorites, but I just really like them. And before I jump into this, I will let you know that I'm probably gonna spoil a bunch of things, so I will leave timestamps down below to each book. So if you want to hear my thoughts on a specific book, go to that book, but just know that I'm gonna be spoiling it a bit. I won't spoil like dramatically, but definitely gonna spoil a bit. But without further ado, let's jump into the books I read. So I'm gonna start with the two books that I liked first, and I think I'm gonna do this video a little bit differently than my previous recent reads. Usually I just kind of ramble on about what I liked about the book and just continuously talk for like a few minutes before I'm like, okay, I've covered this enough. But this time I'm gonna give you like, you know, how I read the book, so if it was physical or audiobook, I'm gonna give you an overall thought, and then I'm gonna give you three things that I specifically liked about it or did not like about it. Hopefully this will keep the reviews kind of concise and to the point. So the first book that I read in this kind of time frame that I actually enjoyed was The Coldest Girl in Cold Town by Holly Black. This is a vampire book and I picked it up for spooky season and I am so glad I did. I read this mostly via the audiobook. I borrowed it from the library. I had this physical copy from a long time ago. I don't know when or where I got it but it had been on my shelves for a while so I meant to pick it up and then I was like you know what spooky season this is the perfect time so I was like it's time for a vampire book. And honestly, it's been a very long time since I've had a really good vampire book. I think the last one that had like good, you know, vampires in it, like interesting vampires in it was like the Savage Song because they have vampire-ish creatures. But regardless, I read this mostly on audiobook and one of the cool things about the audiobook was that it does this thing and it's like an older audiobook. This book is like quite old. I think it's like from 2015, I want to say, or older. But the audiobook does this thing where when it gets to these moments that are really dramatic and kind of tense, it puts on this like tense instrumental music in the background. So I think I said this in a different video, but it's like when there's dun 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 moments, there's dun 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 music. And I loved it. I thought it was a lot of fun and it kind of heightened the experience. And so every time like someone was getting get attacked by like a vampire like that music would come on and it was just a lot of fun but overall I really enjoyed this I really liked it it kind of surprised me in a way that I didn't expect and I love her Folk of the Air series but this obviously wasn't like up to my love of that series but it was still really enjoyable this is also a standalone like one-off fantasy kind of thing, paranormal, so that was also really nice. But into the three specific things that I liked about it, the first thing that I really loved about it was the way that the world is kind of constructed. It's sort of a dystopian near future version of our world where vampirism has kind of become rampant and so they're quarantined into these cities called cold towns and you know kept away from regular humans. So that whole setup was just really interesting because the main character Tana and her ex-boyfriend and then this vampire ended up going to one of these cold towns and it was just this really cool kind of interesting situation and it also was kind of triggering because quarantine and this whole year. It's been a weird year, but regardless, I love that aspect. The second thing I loved was the vampires themselves and the way that vampires become vampires in this world. So you have to get bitten by a vampire and get infected. And then you get this thing called the cold where you have this insatiable urge to drink blood and all that, but you're still human. And so if you can resist the urge for I think about 80 days or something, then you can remain human. But if you can't and you drink blood, then you make the full turn to become a vampire and you die and all that. And so part of the like tense moments of this book and part of the conflict in this book is some of the characters trying to resist changing and trying to stop this infection from happening and I thought it was just really interesting how she framed it as like an infection like a disease and another thing I loved about the vampires specifically is that some of them have kind of reached this celebrity status so they have like their own reality tv shows and do live footage and so people are kind of obsessed with them and they want to go to these cold towns and they want to just bask in this light and a lot of humans just want to become vampires because they think 
it's gonna be so amazing. So there's actually two characters in this book, not to the main characters, but two side characters, who start the book wanting to become vampires. And they have like this ambition to be them because they think that their life is gonna be so much better. And they kind of put these vampires on the pedestal. So that was the second thing I specifically liked. And then the third thing that I loved was really the main character and the love interest. So the main character, Tana, is just a kick butt, kind of really strong main character. She has a really dark backstory to do with her mother, who was infected. There's like some grief there as well. And so Tana's like dealing with this all in the background. And so she ends up in this situation where she's faced with these vampires again and just this whole situation again. And so it becomes kind of difficult for her. And then the love interest, Gabriel, is a vampire and I loved him. There's something mysterious and weird about him because he is a quite old vampire and he kind of talks in these kind of riddles for most of the beginning of the book, which I kind of enjoyed, but it was just kind of the magnetic pull between him and Tana I enjoyed and I think he was just a fun character to read about and overall I just like them both. But yeah, this is just a fun and enjoyable spooky read. Like it definitely was spooky. It had this really interesting concept and I just really enjoyed it. So yeah, definitely recommend if you were looking for a vampire book to pick up. All right, the other book that I enjoyed is My Plain Jane by Cynthia Han, Brody Ashton, and Jody Meadows. So this is the second book in the My Lady Janies series and I read this mostly on audiobook and I kind of devoured it in a couple days and really, really loved it. I loved it a lot more than My Lady Lady Jane, which was kind of surprising to me because I thought it was going to be kind of similar, but I feel like the pacing in this one was so much better, and I just loved the concept a little bit better, and that kind of leads me into the three things that I specifically liked about it. So the first thing was definitely the world and the way it was constructed. It's set in a historical period in kind of the era of Jane Eyre, and in this version of the world, there's something called the Society for the Relocation of Wayward Spirits, and they're basically like this police force or task force that works for the government and relocates wayward spirits, so relocates ghosts that are just roaming about. And so the society is made up of people who can see ghosts and they trap them in these objects. And so one of the main characters is someone who actually works for the society. And then another thing about the world is just, you know, this idea of these ghosts kind of running around and that there's some people who can see them. I just really enjoyed that and it made for like a spooky kind of read that was also kind of funny because you're getting these ghosts who are not very threatening and are just like really annoying and those parts were kind of funny, which leads me to another thing that I loved about this book, which was the humor and the narrator. If you have read this book or any of the books in the My Lady Janie's series, then you know that the books have like these very specific narrators who kind of twist tales and that kind of thing. So I love the narrators and just the way that they talk and it's just very kind of convoluted and all over the place. And they just take liberties, which is just a lot of fun. And also the humor, this one was definitely really funny. I think it was even funnier than My Lady Jane, personally, to me. And then the third thing I loved about this was just the very interesting interesting take that they did on Jane Eyre. So this is based off of Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte, but like Charlotte is a character in this, Jane is her own character, and then there's Alexander who's a new character, and there's a bit of a twist on Rochester's character as well, I don't want to spoil anything, but that was just so much fun. And I just love the way that they kind of set it up because you're kind of following like the regular progression of the story of Jane Eyre, but you're getting all these extra things and extra twists that were really cool, and I just really enjoyed all of that. So, so yeah, it was a lot of fun and I like really enjoyed it, like way more than I thought I would, so that was really exciting. Okay, so I'm gonna leave my new favorite book for the end of this video, so I'm gonna go into the two books that I did not like or were kind of duds for me. So it's not like I hated these books, it's just they kind of disappointed me, I was expecting a bit more from them. So the first of those books was The Archer at Dawn by Swati Tirdala. If you guys know, I absolutely loved the first book in the series, The Tiger at Midnight. It blew me away and surprised me in ways that I just didn't expect. It is an Indian inspired fantasy and I just had so much fun with it. But I read this mostly via the audiobook and so I feel like that might have affected how I feel about it. So take this review with a grain of salt because I wasn't like actively reading it like on the page. I feel like I did zone out a little bit in between, like in the middle, but I still was listening and like quite concentrated on the story and it just didn't do it for me. I really feel like this book suffered from second book syndrome, which kind of happens in some trilogies and some series where the sequel is just not as good as the first one, or there are just kind of these useless conflicts thrown at the characters in the second book because it's kind of a bridge book to the next book, like the last book. So this definitely kind of felt like that for me. And so three specific things about it. One, I felt like there wasn't really much that happened in this book. There was a lot of stuff that was teased at the end of the first book, a lot of twists that happened. And so I was waiting for a lot of those things to kind of come out in this book and I thought that they would come out earlier in the book but a lot of them were kind of just shoved to the end and so a lot of the 
like meat of this book and beginning of this book and middle of this book were just like people talking and trying to make decisions and not really making decisions and not much happening. I felt like plot wise, not much happened except towards like the end. And then the second thing about it was that I really didn't like what was happening with the main couple in this book. So the first book is kind of a cat and mouse game between the soldier and this like assassin and the two of them are kind of hunting each other. And so it made for this really tense and interesting romance. But in this book that was like not there and I feel like the couple was kind of facing a lot of annoying problems and I just didn't like the way that they were acting. I just didn't like what was happening basically. I just, you know, it's like one of those situations where it's like the second book in the series so like the author just throws like conflicts at the main couple because they have nothing better to do and I just didn't like it. Like they weren't working together and it was just annoying and then there was like the second love interest for the girl and I wasn't vibing with that. I just wanted my main couple to thrive and that wasn't happening. So that was kind of a personal thing for me. But the third thing I have to say about this is that I really did love the twists at the end. I think Swati Tirdala does some really great twists in general. She did some really great ones in the first book. And so this one was no different. There was like some really crazy twists at like the very end of this book. And so I was just like jaw dropping at the end of this. There's like mistaken identities and like, you know, political stuff going on. And it was just really interesting that way. That's one thing I will say. One of the reasons why this felt slower is because a lot of the stuff that was going on was more political and I just wasn't enjoying it as much. I think I wanted more of the fun action that was happening in the first book but regardless this wasn't terrible. I just didn't enjoy it as much. I'm definitely going to continue with the series because I want to know what happens with these characters and with the world but I just felt like the second book wasn't as good as the first one. All right the other book that I didn't really enjoy as much as I was hoping to is The Beautiful by Renee Adier. So this is a book that has been on my TBR for so freaking long and I'm so glad I actually just finally read it and finished it but I'm also really disappointed that it didn't live up to what I was hoping it would be and I had heard like mixed reviews about this before but like I still thought I would really enjoy it but as for how I was reading this I read the first 150 pages through the physical book and then the rest of it I kind of listened to the audiobook so I do feel like that might have affected what I felt about this so again take this review with a grain of salt but I do kind of stand by what I feel about this because I just didn't enjoy it as much as I was hoping to. The beginning I feel like was promising. I was intrigued. I was interested but I feel like the book started with this premise that was really interesting and then just didn't deliver on what I wanted and I was expecting more vampires, more explicit kind of vampire hunting or like action like that but I didn't really get that. It was more of a kind of slow mysterious read and I guess it's just not what I really wanted. But three specific things about this. One was that I loved how diverse this book was. It is set in a historical period. It's set in New Orleans and it follows Celine who is like traveling from France to start a new life in New Orleans and she travels with like a bunch of other girls who are joining this convent. But there's also this thing called the Court of Lions which is made up of a bunch of these people with interesting abilities and there's a few people who come from different backgrounds and a lot of the characters in this book were like biracial or like secretly not white and like we're trying to hide that because of you know the climate of the historical period and then there was also this character named Arjun who is from India which I thought was super cool and then he was saying how not all people from India are Maharajas and I just love that it was just so funny so I love that aspect of the book and like I was noticing that as I started it but as I went through I started to not enjoy it as much so the second thing I have to say about this is that this felt a lot slower than I wanted it to be I felt like the characters were really passive in this book I felt like the murders were just happening and they weren't really doing anything about it and then and another thing I didn't really like about this was the romance. I just really didn't vibe with the romance for some reason in this. It's between Celine and Sebastian or Bastion and I just didn't really care for this. Like they had some conversations and banter and things and like some scenes together but I just felt like it was very insta-lovey but not in like a cute way because Celine just like instantly is like attracted to him but she's like infuriated by him and so she won't admit that she likes him but then it's still this insta lovey thing but it's not like the you know I'm enchanted by you it's like oh you're so attractive so I can't help but like want you but then I don't like your personality so I don't want to want you but then I learn more things about your bad boy exterior and then I want to be with you and it was just <clears throat> so yeah I yeah I just did not vibe with the romance in this and I like the obstacles between them I was like this is like so dramatic and unnecessary I just 
wasn't feeling it and I felt like part of the book focused too much on that romance rather than like the cool and interesting things with the vampires and like all the other stuff going on but I did like the kind of mysterious nature of the murders going on and the fact that the villain is like a POV character. The one thing I didn't like though was the audiobook did this really weird voice for the villain which is super annoying so that's another reason why I probably didn't enjoy this as much. But yes that's about all I have to say about this. That was kind of ranty and I just really wanted more from this. It did have some really interesting lines, but on the flip side, I also just didn't like the way that the language is really flowery throughout the book. I think it detracted from the story and it just got really annoying at some point, so I just wanted the plot to move along. So that's how I felt about this one. It was kind of unfortunate, but what can you do? And now for the book that is basically one of my new all-time favorites and like one of my favorite books of the year and that is Legendborn by Tracy Dion. I, oh my god, I went into this thinking that I would love it because I had been recommended it by a bunch of people and they were not wrong. I absolutely loved it. It was just such an amazing read. I read this mostly through the physical copy. There was like some bits that I tried to listen to the audiobook but I didn't like it as much. So this one was a full eye read and I think that was really good because I definitely think I enjoy books more when I actually physically read them. But overall, yes, I love this. As for the three specific things that I loved about this, the first one is definitely the magic system and the history and just the way that this world is kind of constructed. So in this book, uh, King Arthur, the legend is kind of real. And since this time, his descendants have kind of been imbued with his power and like the other knights of the round table have been imbued with their powers. And so uh, they continue this like very strict structure that continues and passes down the lines and they are tasked with kind of protecting humanity from demons and stopping this kind of demon war. But they have a lot of secret things going on and they are called the Legendborn. But then there's also like a flip side to the magic which is like used by other people and through ancestry and through like plants and that kind of thing which is really interesting. And so the main character is kind of straddling these two like magic systems and she's trying to infiltrate the Legendborn to find out what happened to her mother because her mother has died at the beginning of the book and she has a feeling that the Legendborn have something to do with it. And so she's delving into this world and it's just super, super cool. And I just love the way it was like constructed. It gave me a lot of dark academia vibes, which was just so much fun because it's set at a college setting. And I think one of the coolest things about this book was that because it was a POC main lead, it was a black female main lead, she brought like a perspective to the story that was just so interesting because she's coming from this lineage and like this past of, you know, her ancestors having been enslaved. And so most of the Legendborn are kind of these descendants of white European men. She's coming from this different background and so it's like the melding of this situation because she is in a place that she technically isn't supposed to be in and that was just a really cool kind of edge to this like book because I feel like there's regular chosen one stories that are just you know the same thing but this was different because she was a POC main lead and so she had so many other things to bring to the story. Third or second thing I loved was the love interest in this book and the kind of love triangle that goes on in this book. It's not like super strong in the first half of the book but the second half of the book kind of ramps it up because the first half you kind of focus on one of the love interest and the second half kind of brings the other one to light. But from the beginning I knew that the second love interest was like my favorite because he's the bad boy kind of tortured male love interest which I just loved but I think he brought out a side of the main character that I really liked during the second half of the book and he is just such a sweetie and a muffin on the inside which I loved. But yeah, his name's Sal. I love Sal. He is my everything. I just want him to be happy and he deserves all the things. And if him and Bree don't end up together at the end, I'm gonna be so freaking pissed. But yes. And then the last thing that I want to kind of mention about this book that I absolutely loved was the ending and the twists at the end. Because I did not see any of those twists coming or that ending at all. It gets really kind of crazy towards the end. We're getting some battle ish bits, but there is this like a reveal that happens at the end that totally kind of blows everything you thought you knew throughout the entire book out of the park. And I'm so interested to see where it's gonna go in the next one and throughout the rest of the series. So yeah, it was just freaking wild. For those of you who have read this book and know what happens at the ending, like, you know, that reveal was just, oh my God, I loved it. Yeah, it was just, oh, chef's kiss. Amazing. All right, but those are all the books that I wanted to talk about today. I really hope you enjoyed this video and that you enjoy those kind of short reviews, short-ish reviews, because this video is kind of getting long now. But yeah, I just really want to talk about my thoughts on these books and I finally had read a bunch to bring you this video. So I'm hoping to read 
a lot more before the end of the year and bring you more recent reads wrap-ups. Let me know if there's a book that you really want me to pick up soon and do a review for because I will do it. I'm trying to prioritize all the books I want to read before the end of the year so if you haven't seen that video go check it out because uh yeah you should let me know which one of those books I should pick up first. But yeah that's about all I have to say. Please let me know down in the comments below if you thought the same things about the books that I kind of reviewed today. If you loved them as much as I did, if you didn't like them as much as I did, if you had opposing thoughts I would love to hear it. And if you want to hear more about my reading on a regular basis go follow me on Instagram the story ain't over and Twitter the story x over and also check out my goodreads because I do update that quite regularly. But once again thank you so so much for watching. I'll see you in my next video and please remember that the story ain't over. Bye!